So for this scenario here, here where we need to fabricate a maxillary and mandibular acrylic partial, uh, we need to mount this case in center occlusion because there's natural teeth opposing each other. For this particular scenario, I have a pretty good sense how things come together, but I'm not really sure. It, as it feels in my hands, this case could rotate. So you have to be absolutely sure how these come together in centric occlusion, otherwise you're gonna have a huge occlusal error by the time you finish the case. Some scenarios you can get away with just hand articulating it, but we don't have sufficient dentition in the posterior here to give us a nice positive uh, bite. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna fabricate a lower partial bite block on the duplicate model and then transfer it over to our master cast and mount the master cast. Uh, I like to fabricate uh, the bite block on the duplicate model to prevent any damage to the master cast. So we need to survey this model in order, in order to fabricate the bite block, but it doesn't have to be the way we did it for uh, surveying design purposes and bending wires. So it could be very simple in a sense that you can hand survey this model. You don't have to put it on the surveyor. You could, but I think you can get pretty close by, by hand surveying it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna take my pencil and trying to imagine a path of insertion and have the tip of my pencil just run along the lingual surface of the bicuspids here and all the way around this distal guide plane. And I'll do the same thing to the other side. I, know, I don't necessarily have to survey the buccal surface of the tooth because I'm not going to be fabricating wires at this point. So you can tilt your model and adjust your pencil and I think if I were to put this model back on the surveyor, the survey line would be pretty darn close to where I have it now. Now we need to outline the rest of the base of this bite block. So just like before, we're gonna go over the cingulum of the anterior teeth. And then we're going to outline the edentulous extensions for the bite block. So once again, I'm going to come about a third of the way in, right here. Over the richer molar pad, around the buccal shelf. and join the two lines together. I'll do the same thing to the other side. So a third of the way in, straight down. We have a, a buckle freedom here that we have to take into consideration. Try to keep everything nice and rounded. around this frenum, over the richer molar pad. And now we'll move to the lingual side of the model. I'm gonna to go to the deepest part of the vestibule. and join all my lines together. Okay, so once we have that, we can 
start thinking about blocking out the undercuts on the lingual side of the posteriors, on the distal guide plane of the three five, on the three four and the four five, and we're going to incorporate some wax inside the gingival margins here as well. So I'm going to use my number seven spatula. I like to use the tip of it just to have a little more control of the wax. And basically I'm blocking out the undesirable undercuts. Once you've done that, you can take an instrument with a little more of a straight edge, or you can use the same number seven spatula, you could. And then remove some of the excess wax, especially if you have any wax above the, your pencil line. So I'm applying some pressure to this model now. This is, and this is the reason why I don't like fabricating the bite blocks on the Mastercast because you will possibly, you might possibly alter the surface of the cast. So ideal is to duplicate the master cast first, whether if you have to do a bite block on the upper and or the lower, and then fabricate your bite blocks on the duplicates. It is a lot easier to do this when the models are dry, like these are here, so the wax can adhere to the model surface. And then once again, I'm going to heat up my number seven spatula and go back and trim back or carve back the excess wax. And you have to be a little creative here now, and you have to imagine the path of insertion. If you're gonna error, err on the side that you have a little bit too much block out. But certainly keep the wax below the pencil line. This would be a whole lot more accurate if we were to do it on the surveyor, and especially if the surveyor had a heated tip. But all in all, I think that's pretty good. So if we look at it from the side here, it looks like everything is parallel. If anything, maybe a little bit tapered, one or two degrees tapered. And finally, we're gonna apply some wax on the gingival margins, not too much. And we're pretty much done with the blockout portion. 
just gonna scrape away a little bit of the excess wax here. And then with your alcohol torch, just smooth out the wax a little bit. Good. Next step is to apply some separating medium. on the rest of the model so we can adapt our light cure base plate. I'm not going to put anything here so there's no need to put separator there. It's gonna blow off the excess separator. Then we're going to take a light cure sheet and adapt it on our cast. Start with the lingual side and fold towards the buckle of the cast. Just be sure to readapt the the sheet as you're manipulating because it te tends to pull away from the model. So go back and readapt it. We're going to do this again after we carve it back, of course. So this is very similar to adapting a like your base plate as we did with our complete upper and lower cases. Slightly different. And with a fine scalpel here, we're gonna cut away the excess material. Again, stay 90 degrees to the surface of the cast. And peel that away. And as you can see, when I was pulling the material, it lifted from the model, so it go back and readapt it. have your pencil outline on the heavy side so you can see it through the material. So there's very little trimming to do afterwards. After we cure it, all you need to do to this is round off the edges so we can adapt our occlusal rims. trim that off. Just peel that off and finish off this side. And then follow the pencil line Heat up my tip a little bit so it's a little bit easier to carve through the light cure material. And just stay on or just above your pencil line. And that'll peel off nicely. Okay, so I'm just gonna take one last look here and make sure I'm at the right length. And right in here, I want to make sure that I'm nice and tight right up against the tooth surface here. This will enhance the stability of this bite block in the patient's mouth in order to improve 
or improving the the success of acquiring the correct bite. Right on the top of the apron, I'm just going pushing it towards the teeth, kind of tapering it a little bit. So I don't have to do a lot of trimming after. And I'm just basically rounding it off against the lingual sides of the teeth here. One final little carving here. You can certainly trim this after you cure it. But I think it's easier to do it now. Certainly a lot, lot cleaner. There's no dust. Okay. Just a final look. Put everything back in position before we cure. And we're going to place this in the like your unit for about three minutes. You can use your number seven spatula to kind of move the material around, stretch it if you've carved it a little bit too short. And keep everything nice and tidy. You should be able to see a hint of your pencil line. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna place this in the light cure unit for about three minutes. After we remove it from the light cure unit, I'm going to round off a little bit of the peripheries here. Maybe taper a little bit on the apron around the teeth and incorporate our occlusal rims on either side. 